Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I recently read a story about President Franklin D. Roosevelt from the 1930s. He decided that the guests that he was meeting in the reception line were never really listening to what he was saying. One day at a reception, he decided to try a little experiment. As each guest arrived and shook the president's hand, he smiled politely and said pleasantly, I murdered my grandmother this morning. As Roosevelt had anticipated, the guests responded with comments such as, Marvelous, keep up the good work. We are proud of you, Mr. President. God bless you, sir. It wasn't until the end of the line, while greeting the ambassador from Bolivia, that his guest actually listened to what FDR was saying. The ambassador leaned over and whispered to the president, I'm sure she had it coming. Listening is important. My wife, Linda, complains sometimes that I don't listen to her, or something like that. I wasn't really paying attention. And I mean, who starts a conversation with, you're not listening to me, are you? That's a weird way to start a conversation, right? Anyway, as a pastor, we're always teaching pre-marriage couples about the importance of active listening as the key to communication. Active listening is giving a person your full attention, not interrupting, not fearing any periods of silence, reflecting on what you hear, asking questions, and acting on what you hear. Listening is important to help us find our purpose in life. So much of our world is noisy. As modern people, we've put more and more activity and noise in our lives. We're so full of it that we have little time for anything else. And we find that in our life, sometimes spouses don't really listen. Kids don't listen to parents or parents to kids. Politicians aren't listening to their constituents or their colleagues. We have trouble listening to each other, much less listening to God. God can't seem to get anything in edgewise. Hearing God's voice means not listening to the noise around us. And it's not easy because there's so much of it. But it can be done. Anglican monk John Main wrote, Now to tread the spiritual path, we must learn to be silent. What is required of us is a journey into, into profound silence. The early monastic desert fathers and mothers used to illustrate the need for stillness of heart by taking a jar and filling it with water and then pouring in a little sand. As the jar was shook, the sand murkied the water, but as the jar was allowed to rest, the sand settled to the bottom and the water became clear again. The pace of life and the agendas of others can cloud our thoughts and confuse our souls. We need to settle ourselves into God's stillness so that we can become clear again and so that we can follow God's agenda for our lives. Our task is to, be, is to listen and to be open. I recognize there might be times in your life when God seems silent, when we have a hard time hearing him, when we don't see God's work in our lives. Even in 1 Samuel, we hear that the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and people didn't experience visions of God. Even in the Bible, people found it hard to hear him. But God speaks to Samuel, but Samuel doesn't know how to listen. The young Samuel kept rushing up and asking his master Eli, what, sh what should he do? 
And Eli wisely counsels the young man to be still and to simply listen. It's important for us to have mentors like that in our life. People that can offer us wisdom and guidance and to help us hear. God's voice is able to penetrate into Samuel because he was able to listen and to be available for his Lord. Samuel's process was pretty simple. He heard the word of the Lord. He obeyed it. He deepened his relationship in faith with God, and he did the work that God called him to do. He finds his purpose because he listens and responds to God. He hears, and he gives himself to the task God envisions for him. He becomes a prophet. God is ready to do something new when you are ready to listen. Listening to God requires a deliberate choice to shut out the chaos and noise around you and to focus your thoughts on what really matters. Silence can be uncomfortable, but it's so important to find and embrace the silence so that God can speak to us. When we enter into that quiet time, we find that the silence is often pregnant with the creative and redeeming activity of God. The Greek words in the Bible for listen and to hear are one and the same. And that Greek word, hypakovo, actually means to listen and to obey. Hearing is connected to obedience. You listen, you hear, and then you act. That was how so many have responded to the call of Jesus over the centuries. Nathaniel, Paul, Augustine, St. Francis, Luther, Calvin, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, you and me. Come and see. A friend inviting a friend to experience Jesus. The Gospel text from John shows us Jesus gathering up his disciples calling them into new acts and into new lives of commitment and service. And their first act of love for their Lord was to listen. They listened to the Master and heeded the invitation to follow. Like Paul says in Romans, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Listening means being alert, being observant, being perceptive to what is going on within us and around us. It's not passive, but active. Action to focus our attention. We listen, we learn, and we find our purpose to live the life as followers of Jesus. A lot of people are wondering these days, what will life look like? What will life bring? What will we see today or tomorrow or any time in the future? Some of those things you'll be able to control. Some of those things you won't. But I say this. Let this time, our time, be a time of listening to God and to each other and then acting so that the world might know the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.